Ex-prisoners of Reddit what was the scariest thing you saw whilst on the inside? I spent a couple weeks in county jail. On the first day, when we were all being processed into the facility, strip, bend over, spread your cheeks, and cough, we were told very succinctly to never ever even joke about suicide while in the facility. Kind like how you just don't say bomb on an airplane anymore. By day 3, I had a good understanding of the other guys I was locked up with. I was physically the biggest of the white guys in our pod so all the white kids huddled around my table at meals to keep away from the Hispanic folks and the black folks. Yes, there are three teams in correctional facilities, whether you like it or not. There was one kid in the group that seemed underdeveloped mentally. He probably had a learning disability among other things, but he essentially acted like a 12 year old. I knew early on he was going to get himself in trouble because he never stopped talking or moving and he was rubbing everyone the wrong way. I tried to tell him to chill out and be invisible, but he was not understanding what I was telling him. I had been there a week when the 12 year old finally lost his cool completely. He was in the shower, singing and joking around, putting on a performance that went too far and he pooped on the floor as a joke. After the other guys in the shower grabbed their towels and ran, he proceeded to kick the poop all over the walls and into the other shower stalls. I didn't shower for the rest of my stay, truth be told. It turned into a big scene, and then when the trustees came in to clean up the poop all over the walls it turned into an even bigger scene. The whole time, the 12 year old was locked in a cell near the showers, laughing and joking as other inmates had to clean up his poop and make the shower area sanitary again. State run facilities have standards after all. The next day, everyone was looking at the 12 year old with hate in their eyes. Kinda like Goma pile in full metal jacket. Everyone missed their showers the day prior due to the poop sedent, and then the kid was still up to his antics at breakfast the next day. Everyone got really cold toward him, even openly mean. I'll admit, I started ignoring him completely after the poop. It took him a day or two to realize he was hated by all, and then his personality changed dramatically. He became sad, despondent, and started talking to the co's because the other inmates wouldn't talk to him anymore. He f up and told the co's that he should just harm himself and make everyone happy, and that was all it took. They dragged out the blue burrito. This is the scariest thing I had seen in jail. The blue burrito was a 10 foot long blue foam mat, like you would use in gym class with two 12 foot long red belts attached. They laid it out on the floor, forced the 12 year old to lay on the mat, and then they rolled him up with his arms at his sides into the blue burrito. The two long red belts clipped together at the top and bottom of the burrito keeping it all nice and tight. This was the suicide protocol at the jail. No counseling, no medical ward. You lose the ability to move. They put that poor bastard in the burrito around 8pm, dragged him into his cell, and left him laying on the floor, wrapped up tight, until breakfast the next morning, around 8am, the child molesters and gang members in protective custody get to eat breakfast first. Imagine being unable to move, barely able to breath, with no end in sight for 12 hours on the floor of your 8x8 cell. My cell was up above his, and I heard him weeping and moaning in agony all night. He didn't say a word to anyone, or look anyone in the eye for that matter for the rest of the time I was there. One night in the blue burrito broke him. Not me, but my husband was in prison as a young adult. He said that they had a way of checking your ego in the spot he was at. The toughest guys would come up to you on your first day and ask how many push-ups you could do. If you were smart you would just sort of blow it off, or laugh it off and move on. If you were a stupid show off, or had something to prove you would claim a large number, or talk yourself up. If you did that then they would be all friendly, and be like oh, let's see it. So the poor guy would do as many push ups as they could. The tough guys would gas the new guy up, acting friendly, pushing him to do more. They acted impressed and joked around. Then as soon as the new guy had done as many push ups as possible they would jump him, and beat him up. He would be helpless to resist because he had maximumed himself out on push-ups. Afterwards any guy with an ego was normally really quiet for the remainder of their stay. I was in a minute and I saw some brutal fights. But the worst thing I ever witnessed was from some idiots. They stole some isopropyl alcohol from the med unit somehow. Brought it back mixed it into drinks and drank it. They were f throwing up worse than I've ever seen and down four eyed sick as f screaming in agony shriveled in a bull on the floor. 
I've heard of people drinking floor stripper for GHB or some shits. But the things people will do to try and get f***ed up is way beyond anything I can comprehend. Also a bonus answer for you. The worst scariest most painful thing I've ever dealt with. I got scabies and had it for 11 months. I was treated several times for it, but because people were infected around me, I kept getting it. If you have never had it or even heard of it be thankful. I have scars on my body from scratching because of how itchy and uncomfortable I was. I finally had to threaten a hunger strike. You want them to listen in prison. Go to medical, ask them for the lieutenant, and say you are going on a hunger strike. They treated me a last time and put me on a psych. Hold in isolation for 3 days. When I got out they transferred me to a new housing unit and I never got it again. I spent a day in country jail, the same jail where a family member worked at for a while as a lieutenant. It was his retirement job meaning easy work. When you get into country they give you a wristband with your full name and a barcode on it. For that 20 something hours I did everything I could to try to hide my last name because it is very distinctive and the same as my family member. Not a prisoner, but an ex-guard. I worked at a juvenile detention facility in New Mexico. The absolute scariest thing I ever saw was a young boy, 9 years old, booked in for murdering both of his parents. There was nothing there. I failed to call this thing even human. I looked into this child's eyes and felt more fear than I ever have to this day. This was no child, it was a monster. Pure evil, condensed and given human form. And to clarify, I have booked and looked after murder suspects before. It was nothing new. But this kid was different. Very different. He never broke any rules and always followed commands, but never ever spoke unless directly asked something. And then it was curt, short, just to answer a question. He never cried either, which is highly unusual for a 9 year old kid in jail. He was eventually tried and transferred to mental facility. But I'll never forget the kid's eyes. It haunts me to this day. I saw a guy keep scratching his arm until it bleed, then he took Herion and put it inside the wound because he didn't have a needle. It was completely fked he was doing it in the courtyard under the camera so the camera couldn't see him. I hope never to see anything that fked like it seemed like he would do anything to get that Herion into his bloodstream. Not me but a teacher of mine told me a story of one of her students that spent a week in juvie. He wasn't there for more than two days when a gang of boys attacked him sliced his back up with razors and raped him. No one knew until they came to release him and his mom put a hand on his back only to hear him scream in pain because of all the cuts on his back. Where I was, the guard towers were armed with a variety of less than lethal firearms. A fight started on the breezeway, main walkway between units. You hear the siren and you have about 10 seconds sit on your ass and cover your head to protect from Oko the spray. Else, the guards start shooting shotguns loaded with rubber balls at you. One of the guards hit one of the guys fighting directly in the sack with a rubber ball round. Turned the front of his jeans red by the time they got him up and to the infirmary. Apparently lost a testicle due to rupture. I was taking a shower in a communal shower. This guy walks in and is immediately jumped by four dudes. One guy takes out the metal strip to a safety razor and proceeds to cut this dude's f***ing ear off. Good times lol. My friend used to do industrial work in a steel factory or something. He was being trained by an Honduran worker to do forging. It was a tough job, but he said the guy was very nice and really helped him to understand. My friend has an easy time becoming friends with significantly older adults. Kept telling he was a nice dude, with a wife and daughter, managed to legally adjust his status in my country, with a seemingly normal and honest life. A few weeks later, we find out the dude in the local news. He apparently has been arrested for a week or so for raping his own daughter, and stabbed her in the back I believe, although it wasn't very deep cut so she survived. That same friend worked for the police for a while, not as an officer, he told me in the prison they had this punishment where, if you commit a violent crime, the inmates would do that crime to you 50 times, he had been stabbed 50 times in the back, and raped his anus 50 times as well, in the newspaper you could barely tell his shirt was covered of blood, and his pants of both blood and fesses.